up? It's your boy Bobby Krills, and right now you're tuned into the Heart of the City podcast, episode number three. And today I'm sitting with a living legend. I got my man, somebody that's been holding it down for the city for years, um, has accomplished some amazing feats in music, and just somebody that's so important to the hip hop culture in the area that we're from. Um, today I'm sitting with my man Milk Bone. Peace, you peace, already peace. Know. peace. Salute, Milk Bone. Salute. Thank you, you know. for coming, bro. Any day. Heart of the city. You know, so um, as you guys know, this is the type of uh, podcast where I sit down with people that are very influential, people that have accomplished something, people that really mean something to where they're from. So let's start off with a simple question. No bone. Where were you born, brother? Straight Perth Amboy. Perth Amboy, New Jersey, Rabbit and Bay? Rabbit and Bay. Rabbit and Bay. The heart of the roaches. Heart of the roaches. That's it. (laughs) That's what's up. That's what's up. So Perth Amboy, New Jersey, born there. Um... What's your heritage? What's your, your your race, your nationality, your parents? What about you? I'm Polish. My my father's side is Polish. My mom's mixed with everything, but basically I'm just white. Okay. Like, I, I don't speak no other language. You don't speak Spanish? Well, I, I, I know. From Amboy, yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, nah. That should have been learned. a given, brother. I know when you're cursing at me, though. <laughs> you know the curse word. I know the shit. curse word. That's funny. That's what's up. All right, so... um. You were born in Perth Amway, uh, Polish heritage, a uh, couple different other things in there. Right. Um, where were you raised? Were you raised in Perth Amway as well? Is that? I was raised all my life in Perth Amway. In Perth Amway. I didn't, I didn't move out of Amboy until probably in my late 20s. Late 20s. Okay. Yeah. What part of Perth Amway? Down the street from Delaney. Okay. I mean, we all know the whole Delaney thing if you yeah, know your yeah, history, yeah. but definitely Delaney Homes, that area. What really? do we call that? Uh, uptown? That's uptown. Yeah, yeah, uptown. So yeah, that's. I mean, Delaney, Delaney, Delaney raised me, and, and dirty Delaney and dirty Delaney is why I be yelling. You know what I mean? That's what's up, man. For real. So Delaney homes. I mean, what was it like growing up in Delaney homes? Growing up around them people, around that that environment. Is that something that kind of molded the Milk Bone brand? It really, it really started with playing ball, basketball, the the rec leagues, and being a kid growing up, and and. I just became, I was the only white boy in there too. So I just became best friends with all them. And we grew up together. And I was just in Delaney every day and every night, sneaking out my window. Okay. Only, yeah. only, only, only thing I knew how to do, go to Delaney and play ball. That's where the fun was at. And then I stopped playing ball and then went to other things because it was Delaney. Okay. <laughs> all right. So Delaney is uh, definitely a big part of the, the molding of Milk Bone. Is, is, it is the only molding. That's awesome. Yeah. Honestly, I I love the fact that that video was shot in the Lane Homes because at least we can still look back at it. There was no other way to not do it in the Lane. You guys caught a good glimpse of what it looked so the <laughs> it yeah, looked the yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like if you're from Amboy, looked- you know what I'm talking about. But behind the fence, and then it was like snowy outside That's and shit like that. So that video was like iconic. For, for you don't even know, man. Like I don't even think you understand what you did for the city, for people that were watching growing up and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that, so. yeah. And I mean, at the time, I didn't know either. Yeah. When you, when you're that young, you don't you don't expect that you're gonna make an impact. You're just doing what you love to do. That's crazy. I wish the video was shot at night, though. That would have been dope. That would have been. That would have been at least the scene time. at night. That would have been dope. Imagine if you would have been able to get like some mist off the snow and shit like that. With the, everybody. We should have got some of it because at one point in the video, we all took a break to go eat. And we all went to Sizzler. I remember Sizzler's was over we there. We were quick we checking should, we all that. A, we should have got a scene over there in Sizzler because that turned into a food fight. Jesus Christ. Y'all yeah. was just acting up. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a le- that's a legendary story, man. So that video yeah. shoot must have been, um, that shit was lit, wasn't it? The re- the- I was too young to even be in that place. I, I, if I, if I would have been around y'all motherfuckers at that time, mm-hmm. my mom would have smacked me. Like, yo, get away from these motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we did, the, the best part about that whole day, because it was a whole day video shoot, was yeah. we did the Keep It Real joint, and then we did the remix also. Okay. And when we did the remix, we took the remix to Hall Ave. Okay. And we did the remix on Hall Where Ave. Where on Hall Ave? Right where the, the new school is. That was all. That Patton, was Patton that, that was all the open field oh, across okay. from the Chinese spot. Okay, that was all the open field, and they opened up the gates for us, and we all went out to that field, and that's when we all pulled up in the bus, and Naughty showed up, and we had the big, huge snowball fight, and the cops and the cops couldn't even do nothing. Everybody was out there drinking and smoking right on Hall Ave because they didn't have enough cuffs. Not one issue. What are you gonna but do? There was not one issue. Not one issue. 
That's no. the beauty of it. Like, you was able no, to bring a lot of people was together. Like that. And, and from all over here, where everybody came together and just vibed out. Yeah, that's that so was, dope. And I didn't... It was just fun. That's one like, of those memories you're going to live with forever, right? Forever, yeah. Yeah, that's dope as shit, man. That's dope as shit. So, um... How did you, um... How should I say... How, how or who were you growing up in high school? Were you like known for rap, or was it like another yeah. dynamic to you? No, nah, it was it 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 started before. When did high you school. start writing? I started writing. I think I was in fourth grade, fourth grade or fifth grade, because my man that moved from Bronx I started writing hip hop, like yeah, rap. Yeah, he moved. He moved. This dude uh, JG, he came and and I was like, who's this dude? He was he was way older. But he introduced me to Fat Laces, the lead jeans with the crease down the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that is something that I was that I never knew about. And then I go in his basement and he starts playing Run DMC, and that's that's what's that's something. where it started. Yeah, like just it's just making words rhyme. I could do that, and that's how that part of it started. You became one hell of a wordsmith. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and, and then, Rhyming but, everything. Now. But then it, it, my, I really got my name. I didn't have a rap name. I was just White Boy Tommy. Yeah. And I got that name from every weekend I would go up to the movie theater when they had Razzmatazz. And we would always battle at Razzmatazz. Oh, outside. shit. So Razzmatazz was like a, like a hip-hop Razzmatazz spot? Razzmatazz was my first place of battling. Oh, that's dope. Who'd you yeah. battle? Anybody notable over there? Or just You was just in the trenches battling and whoever the fuck was there. Whoever wanted to try. Whoever wanted to try. I love that. Yeah, and... and I never heard of anybody that came out after that, so I guess I shut it down at a young age. <laughs> That's what's up. He said, whoever wanted to try, I never heard of him after that, so... I ain't even have a ride to get home. <laughs> <laughs> you figured it out, though. You I, figured yeah, it out. I got home somehow. But That's it, Amway shit, though. I, and I didn't even see one movie. I That's just went funny. there for that. That's funny as hell. I, I walked over that bridge a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Right through the gullies and shit. And, yeah, 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 yeah. It was good times, man. Memories. All right, so um, who did you meet? That um, you know, kind of broke you as an artist. You know, like who who was the one that really you met him, and then from that day it was just different. Everything just started falling into place. That was a that was a, a obviously it wasn't an overnight thing. It was it was step by step by step, and this person, that person, this person. Yeah. But those days, Erasmus got me friends with people over in Carteret, and then I started hanging out in Carteret. So then hanging out in Carteret, in Chrome. Shout out to Chrome. Simone Hines. She knew people because she was a singer. Yeah. So I ended up getting this one spot that I could perform at in Perth Amboy at Caribbean Hall. In Caribbean Hall, I opened up for Special Ed and and Gangster. Where's Caribbean Hall? State Street, all the way by the bridge. It's not there no more. Okay. I don't know what it is now. But every, every weekend. Who'd you open up for? Special Ed. And Gangstar. Oh, there was an Amway? Yeah. Get the fuck out it of was, here. And it was graduation night. It was my freshman year. It was graduation night, and all the seniors were there. Everybody had their tassels and still gowns on. And I wasn't expected to, to go up on stage, but they were letting... This is back when, if you could rap, get up here, get up here. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those. That was, so, that was so, a different vibe, wasn't it? Yeah, so you just go up, and I started I started doing my thing, and the whole crowd yelling, go white boy, go white boy. And then Special A came on, he did his thing. Guru came on, did their thing. And there was this one lady in there. Yeah, Guru. Yeah, man. Rest in peace. Jesus. There was there was history th right here. Yeah, man. There was this one this one lady, Liza. She was there. I I don't I don't remember how she was there or why she was there, but she came up to me that night and we exchanged numbers. She got me connected with she was a manager at uh she used to run Club Zanzibar. Okay. In Newark, so she connected me to Cool V. DJ Cool V? DJ Cool V. So for those, that, those people out there that don't know who DJ Cool V is, who's DJ Cool Bismarck V? Bismarck and Cool V. The legendary from, from Juice Crew, Warner Brothers, Molly Maul. Wow. The whole squad, yeah. So Cool V invited me to go into his basement with, and, and he would have like, like, not competitions, but tryouts. And it would be every Thursday. Every Thursday... I take the train up there, not knowing where, how the hell I was taking the train because I didn't know what I was doing. Took the train up there, and he would have different artists every every week at the same time. He was lining all of them up. You just you just go. Yeah. Bismarck would, would Bismarck and V would would be playing different. Where tracks. was this? Elizabeth. 
So Bismarck and Cool V was in Elizabeth running pretty much a fucking gulag of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you just go in there and and they're, they're just playing beats. That's so fucking real, bro. Playing, like that's crazy as beats. hell to hear that. They're playing tracks and every you get up there and you spit. When you're done with your verse, the next person. Prove your point. What you got? If you can't keep up, if you got nothing else, you don't get invited back the next week. Oh shit! Yeah, it was you. You do it, and you keep. So how doing many it. weeks did you do this for? Probably like six months. Jesus Christ! Every yo, every day in school, I had to make sure I had like a good more. Oh, so you was doing? You was going, So you were still in high school doing this? Yeah, I was a freshman. <sighs> so you were going to this shit on Thursday with Biz Marquee and DJ Cool V. Yeah. Going back to school for the rest of the week, you're just sitting there writing rhymes, right. writing rhymes, and memorizing these shit. That's so why, when you go why, back there the next time, that's why I had summer school for every year in high school. Jeez. I had three English classes as a senior because I didn't do shit. So you was putting that pen to work. All I did, in tra- and back then I wasn't smoking, so it was easy to memorize what I wrote. Yeah, you know. So, and then after every every week, they would they would make cassette tapes. Copies of cassette tapes and just give them out all across the city and all, all through Newark. And then that, those cassette they tapes. They were recording those things and giving those things out? Giving them That's out. That's so fucking dope, bro. Yeah, and just, just giving them out, giving them out. And then people would, and back then I wasn't named Milkbone or White Boy Tommy. Biz named me White Lightning. White Lightning. White Lightning. So then. I think your career would have been a little bit different <laughs> with that name. <laughs> Rest in peace, Biz Marquis. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> so then, that that those uh, basement sessions with Cool V and and circulating the tapes is what got me a phone call from this dude Pookie, and then I found out who Pookie was. Who was Pookie? That's KG from Naughty by Nature's brother. Okay. So he asked me History. if I, he asked me if he can come pick me up and he, to see if I wanted to get down with the camp, and I'm like. Nah, this this ain't real. This ain't real. This can't be real. Like at that time, Tretch. They were the shit. They Tretch. Were, they were everything. Yeah. Just like there's OPP was out, and you're calling me. Yeah, that's sick. That's, and you're in high school, and I'm in high school. So they pick me up. Pookie comes pick me up. We go out there, out to East Orange, 118th Street, and I just walk up to this car. Pookie brings me over to this car and it's a full of dudes smoking. They put a beat on. Your nerves had to be crazy at that moment. Nah, nah. You was calm. I was. I, I had a fever. Oh shit! I had a fever. Like so Michael I, Jordan so in the, 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 the flu and shit. I, I didn't even give a fuck. I, I went up there sick. I remember what I was wearing and everything, and we just all start. Everybody's everybody spitting. Everybody spitting, and everybody in the car. They were all young dudes too, because Naughty Naughty just came out. They didn't bring out the Rotten Rascals and the yeah, Cruddy yeah, Click yeah. yet. They was they were just in the car and we're, we're kicking it, and that led to me staying. You spit for them, for good, well, obviously for a good hour. Jesus, we just kept going and kept going and kept going, and they were so impressed that a white boy was doing this. I think that, that had to be like. Because they were saying some dope like the, shit the too, but they weren't expecting. Yeah, they weren't expecting like a short, not not short, but a skinny, a skinny, pretty, pretty boy, white kid spitting what I was spitting, like from Delaney. Yeah, they did. They, you don't. I didn't come across as what I was. I was about to say to him. Yeah. So that led to another car pulling up, and then Tretch gets out, and that. That was the moment. From just seeing, because I, I, I went, I went out to to a, a home base when they had home base, the club, okay. and that's the first time that I seen Naughty perform. When Tretch came out with the machete, that was like mind boggling to me. Yeah. To 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 see how some how, to see how he had that magnet on a crowd. That it was yeah. it was just the biggest the biggest feeling for me. Like even now I get goosebumps thinking about it. Like Tretch was that Tretch was that boy. He was that. Yeah. So then. That led to... And it's funny, because a lot of people don't give him that. I don't want to say they don't give him that, but they don't acknowledge it like he wasn't that. Right. But he was. It, it's, to me, that's just because Naughty, after they came out, they gradually went mainstream, as you should, to get that. But the good thing is they never 
made whack music even by doing even so. Even when it was mainstream. Even yeah, when they went mainstream, they didn't like sell out. Was, exactly. The shit was still raw, was naughty still by raw nature sound. sound. It was yeah, dope. Yeah. So, all right. So, yeah. So, so, Tretch walked up. And then we started talking. Then after that, obviously, like, I had to, I had to wait. I had to wait. It's not like they were just going to go out and... and Give you a budget and say here. Get, get, that yeah, budget. yeah. So it, it, it took a while because they 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 had to they had to mold me. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't ready to. Oh, be they were A and R in you. They were they were. They were yeah, they were they were artist like, development. Like, they were like, exactly. They they had. This is every, what you're gonna be seeing. This is. Yeah, I was kind of like a training. Go to all the shows and all that stuff. See what but, they're dealing with. But it was even song format. Okay. Song format and and structure of a song and the direction of a song, like because not just a lot a lot of people, they're out there just writing. But they're not saying nothing. There's no direction because there's no there's no aim in what in there's no focus on what the person is supposed to hear. They want to listen to a certain topic, not just words that rhyme. And I had to get out of that. So they taught me that. And then little by little, I started recording with them. And then it, it took like from from when I was with Naughty, it took a, it took a good two years. Before they, so you went through like a two year training camp, a right? two year training camp, a two year learning experience. Well, I'll tell you what, and the impatience was growing. I was like, I can imagine I you were like, probably like, "What the fuck am I doing here? What am I doing?" Yeah, here? I'm not, I'm not getting no money waiting. Yeah. So, but I mean, that's that's the way. So the moment that they thinks. decided to say, "Hey, milk, you ready?" No, they didn't even tell me that. They what just was said, it? They just said, "All right, we got a deal for you." <laughs> they were shopping that shit the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So they they brought they salute to them. That's real as fuck. The whole time you're going through training camp and you're growing impatient, they're still, and, and they're shopping him. Yeah, they were shopping him. And they got me. I had a, your first deal was with I, who? I made a couple songs that they thought that they thought was all right. This is good enough to go. So we went to they went to Capitol Records. Capitol Records signed me in an instant. Tracy Waples, who was uh, Sticky Fingers' uh, girlfriend, she was the A and R. History. She was dope. She was dope. And but was still, it a big money deal or no? It was a big money deal for back then. No, it was a big money deal for them. I was just the dummy that signed for what I signed for. Yeah. They like Capital dumped over a million dollars into the project. Yeah. But they just didn't know how to work it. Because they're whole, did you have any like lawyers or anything involved at that time? Yeah, my lawyer said it's it's yeah it's a basic contract. I'm like, all right. I don't know what that means, but okay. If you're saying it's okay to sign, I guess it was okay to sign. I didn't know that I was gonna be working the next year. Yeah. You know, but that's that's just it's part of the business. Nature the, of the, the business. The dumbness of having youngness. Yeah. You know, so. No, I hear you. But the, one of one of the biggest the biggest. One of the best experiences I ever had is before the album even dropped. Angie Martinez put Keep It Real on Hot 97 when they had the Battle of the Beats. I remember this. And I didn't even I didn't even know that that they you had beat the record. Biggie, right? No, nah, Biggie wasn't in it. Who did you Red beat? Man. You, you beat Red Man. I beat Red Man. Uh, there was a bunch of them. It had to go. It had to go five days in a row, and we were out there in Delaney every night. Nice, nice. Every night at eight o'clock. Playing it, and you beat and five people in a I row. Beat five people in a row and went to the hall. You of remember fame. who it was? I know it was Bush Babies, uh, Red Man, Red Man. I know it wasn't Onyx because Onyx they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have put that record against Onyx with Sticky Fingers yeah. being being. I, f I forgot the other ones. I think Ja Rule was one of them. Like early, early job. Early job, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there was a couple. There was two others that I never heard of, but apparently they they had to be some somebody Something, for them yeah, to put it on. Something, yeah. So to be there. But yeah, that was one of the best feelings, and my biggest experience while I was with Capital was I'm up there because I was I was at the label every day, so I'm like all night, just getting affiliated with with all the workers that like the merchandisers and and and. Everybody that's doing stuff for me, all the magazine people, yeah. like you got to build the relationship. You were working in the work, he was working the rooms. You have to. Yeah. Was one night, Nas walked in. That's dope. And I look at Nas, I'm like, now I start getting nervous. And he didn't say what's up. He was like, "What up, Milk? Like you know me?" He said that to you. He said, "He said, what oh, up, Milk? I like your <laughs> shit." I'm like, 
That was that Maybe your fanboy that 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 he said that to you. Yeah, I was <laughs> Yo, give me a pillow, I'm staying. <laughs> he knew your name? <laughs> <laughs> me? Yeah. Was there another yeah. milk in the belly? That was Nas. Nas was Nas. That's when Nas was Nas, yeah. So then after that, the biggest the biggest thing that really turned everything down was the urban department, or the radio department, shall I say, for Capital, they were all new. So they would try to go to all these radio stations without having the relationship with the DJs. Yeah. So there's one dude, Clint, who was the main urban radio promoter. Flex didn't like him. Flex never liked him. So that put a put, that put a big-ass dent in everything. Is this the Axe Flex track that you made? or? No, that was way after. But does this have anything to do with that? In a roundabout way, but not at that time. Okay. Not at that time. Okay. Because that had nothing to do with me. But you, I could just I could just hear when I was doing the interview with Flex, the the kind of dryness and wanna hurry up and get it over with type of type of thing. It was and more the, just the, the uncomfortableness of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then and at the and at that time, the urban department was already gonna shut down. So Capital kicked Notebone, Master Ace, Channel Live, and one other group off of Capitol. All the other other three went upstairs to the to the upper floors to EMI. My manager said, "No, we're just gonna wait." Like, I, and I, Krills, I never understood that because where's the party at and keep it real? We're both in the top one hundred on Billboard charts. Yeah, and I have no deal. Why? What are, what are we, we waiting, waiting for? for? It, it made no sense to me. So after probably like six months of having no deal and it's starting to drop on the charts because there's no nobody to push it no more. Yeah. So I go and I start making calls. And that is what started getting me in trouble because I, I had no idea about getting blacklisted and getting blackballed. And then my manager called me. He was like, yo, you keep calling people, you're going to get blacklisted. I said, what's that? He said, where nobody wants to fuck with you because it looks like you're being a non-team player. And they need team players. They don't, they don't, it looks like you're being a, a little baby going around and they don't want to deal with that. And I was like, all right, well, what the hell's going on? I still didn't get no answers. Later on, fuck that. I started making calls again. And I got blacklisted. Didn't hear nothing from my manager. He said, nah, they ain't fucking with you no more. I was wow. like, all right, whatever. Two years after that, I mean, I'm still recording. I'm yeah. still recording because I, I'm, I'm still out there. You got there. a taste of it. You already yeah, know what the and, fuck. And, yeah. and my videos and songs are still getting played out there in the country. Yeah. Just not in New York. So <coughs> I get the next deal with this this lower budget company, but they had a big ass backing from, from a major league baseball player. So we get a deal. I record that album. And that, the main reason that they signed me is because Eminem dissed me. Eminem, so they saw an opportunity. Eminem, uh, yeah. They, they, so Eminem, this is, all right, so this is a segue into where I was going to go anyway. Right. So that's how the Eminem beef started? His, Eminem's first single. So that was just a random jab. That wasn't like a, like uh, a premeditated thing, right? Nah, nah. He, 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 it was, it was me, Third Base, Vanilla Ice, and Everlast. Yeah. He dissed all the white rappers at the time who were relevant. And like two bars. It was like two bars. It was, it was, it was four bars. Two, four bars. Four bars. Four four, bars. It was four bars. But at that time, like, I, I, it made me laugh because that song, I Just Don't Give a Fuck, he sounded corny. Yeah. But as time went, I was like, he didn't diss me. He didn't diss them. He used us as a stepping stone to help him. To propel him. That's all That's all it was. And But still, it, it was my opportunity also. Yeah. So... Death Row signed me to a to a, to a single deal, so I dropped something on. on so you actually know Shug? I'm glad I don't. Don't? <laughs> I, oh, I, you never really I met never Shug? Met him. No, he was he was locked up. Okay. He was locked so up. So you he's, signed to Death Row when Shug was locked up? Yeah, and all his other people, all his other people. Yeah, I hear a lot of bad things about through. that guy. He didn't hang me off about that. <laughs> he be hanging motherfuckers <laughs> off the balcony and shit. That's funny. He's like, he ain't hang me off the yeah, balcony. Me. <laughs> but then, but then that led to. Like, I even, I even went to, to a spot where Eminem was performing. It was a sound factory. I went to Sound Factory, and Flex was DJing. 
And I went there and I knocked on the freaking back door and everything on the dr in, in, on his dressing room. And Eminem's people came out and they were like, yo, I'm a fan, I'm a fan, your shit is dope. So I go to talk to Flex and Flex said, you can't get up there. And I said, why? He said, because even if you beat him in a battle, you're not going to win the battle because all these people came to see him. Yeah. You might hurt yourself by even doing that. Yeah. I was like, all right, I, I guess I understood that. So I took a wasted trip to New York. And you know I didn't stay for the show. Yeah. <laughs> I just fucking left. So that eventually, I still went on tour. I still did another tour. I went out to L.A., that was with that was with Corrupt and Snoop and everything and Legends, I was, that was Flex. A, that was a great that was a great time being out in LA with Corrupt. So we damn we got we got into a lot of stuff already. The only thing I didn't get into you with so far, not not that you're mentioning those names, is mm -hmm. um who were your favorite artists to work with? And it sounds like shit, you worked with Snoop, bro. Like you've been with Snoop. Spent the night at his house. It's fucking Snoop. Hey, you know Snoop? Snoop. That's Snoop, bro. He be with Martha Stewart. When we, I know. We we went into we went into his house, big ass house, waterfall in the front. Blunts, joints, not blunts. They don't they don't smoke blunts. Yeah, out yeah, there. yeah. Bigger than his cup. Jesus Christ. And then we start. We he's his DJ's playing the beat. We start rapping, freestyling, and then we go start playing uh, college football. On and he brings his big ass fucking dog out like this tall, <laughs> and I'm just looking at him. He's he's smelling my face. <laughs> And he just, <laughs> Snoop just, Snoop just comes up. He's like, you want to snap a dog? I'm like, what about this motherfucker? <laughs> the dog is smelling my face. That's how tall the dog is. And do I want to snap him? <laughs> oh, that shit's funny, bro. And the, be the, the best is when I went, went on a, a mini tour with Biggie. That's lit. Talk about that. That was, that was, I mean, it, it was, it was a show with Biggie, Lost Boys, Ja Ru the Damager, Little Kim, Junior Mafia, and it was out. It, that, that was out in North Carolina, and that was the you you can't. That, that was an arena, an arena like Damn. where you can't even you can't move. Don't try to walk through the crowd because you ain't gonna. You'll never find your way out. That was one of the biggest experience and the best sound systems that you could ever perform on. The first time I was on a cordless mic. Wow. Everything else was wired before that. Yeah, it was that. That was that was an experience. Yeah. So you you. You rock the stage with Biggie, man. You've been on the I stage. I held the same mic as Biggie. Jesus. That's some shit. That's crazy as hell, man. That's some hip hop history for your ass right yeah, there. Man. So Milk Bone, man, you've been through it all, man. You done seen it all, you done did it all. Mm, and you know what? That's that's why like at this point, even if nothing ever happens again, I'm cool with what I with what, what I with what I did. Yeah. yeah. And and even if it's not the money aspect of it, it's the experience of it. The flex it's, that you get to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I rock the same mic as Biggie. What? Even, even, <laughs> even, even, even what's bigger than that is being a kid. Being a kid and you're like, I'm going to be a rapper. Like like every all the kids want to be, I want to be a football. I want to be a quarterback. I want to be a, a three-point shooter. I want to be, they all want to be professional athletes. I just wanted to be a rapper. And you did just it. to say I did it you is did like, it. There's nothing I can't do if there's, I did that. There's something I got to say to a lot of the local people from where we're from. It's like, until somebody does what he did where we're from, like, you're, you're the top dog, dog. You're, you're the bar still. You know what I mean? You're still the bar. I, I appreciate that. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a real thing. I don't know if you feel that, but you're the bar. Until somebody can top that, until somebody can say that they were on the motherfucking box... Yeah. When people were calling in, like, you know what I mean? Like, they used to say that I was doing it myself. They, I called in as a kid. I'm not going to lie. You know how happy I was I that know. I was from Perth Amboy and your shit was on that, yeah, that yeah, channel, yeah, bro? And yeah. I saw the bridge under seven by 7-Eleven yes, and sir. Delaney Holmes. And, yes, sir. Come on, man. Like, they, they, they got it fucked up out here. But with that being said, man, Heart of the City podcast, No Bone. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming through, brother. You know that. This is love, man. You already know. It's my brother right here. Always, always, always. Partner in bars. And we got a new joint coming soon, too. We got that shit sitting in the stash. We got to put that out. Shh. <laughs> we got to put that out. And I and I ain't hating on, on all the, the new style of music, man. It's, it's what they do. It's what they grew up with. I just can't be a part of it. It is what it is. But Harder City Podcast, your boy Bobby Crows. My man Milk Bone. We out. My jeans always saggy. <laughs> Tell them, nigga. No skinnies. <laughs> <laughs>